Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be replacing the U-joints and center bearing again on my Toyota Tacoma. Let's get this thing started. So for those of you guys who are new to this channel, my name is Carl. And this channel is dedicated to all things mods, DIY, and engineering for your second and third gen Tacomas. So make sure you smash that like and subscribe button already, guys. Do it now. Just do it! Now this video is part five of the trail damage repair series. And we'll recap all the work that we've done so far at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around till then. And with that, let's get to the truck. Here's the drive shaft, guys. As you can see, it's quite dirty. Another thing you can probably tell is it's definitely gotten very worn down. 35 inch tires with the re gearing is definitely very hard on the drive line. So the, uh, the motor mounts, the transmission mount, those all took a beating. And here's the forward end for comparison. There is some tight spots when I'm turning it this way. So at this point, it definitely is a good time to replace these bad boys. Now I will be linking my full detailed video on how to replace these U-joints down in the description below. So this one will be more of a review. And as usual, you'd wanna mark out, this is what I had marked earlier on the flange on the transfer case. So I'm just marking out so that we can line these back up when we reinstall these yokes. Always do wear safety glasses when you're working with snap rings, guys, because you don't want this flying and hitting you in the eye. Now with these Moog 270 U-joints, there are these grease fittings. They're the ones that's a little bit more flush and we will have to remove them. And this one just uses a flathead screwdriver. So should just be able to undo uh, them completely. Just like that. There we go. This one was pretty seized on there. So I used my needle nose vice grips in order to get it out of there. So this time I'm going to be using my shop press. Take these things out. I do have a socket underneath, which is just big enough to balance that one side of the yoke and have the needle bearing housing basically go through it. There we go. We got that one side completely pushed through. And this should allow us to remove that bearing cap completely and take that U-joint off of the one side so we can separate it. There we go, that's off. And that's good. And basically all we're doing is repeating this multiple times. So here's the setup. In order to remove that 24 millimeter nut and separate this yoke so that we can remove the center bearing. I have this drive shaft basically clamped onto this workbench to prevent it from lifting. And I also have this breaker bar fed through the yoke so that it prevents the drive shaft from spinning as we try to undo that 24 millimeter nut. Now we can take some liquid wrench and douse the splines on that yoke. So that actually helps slip that yoke right off of the splines there. And here I'm using a plastic hammer and then just working that back and forth between the two sides of the yoke to loosen that yoke from the spline. Once it's loose, I did take my brush, clean up that one surface 
and mark the orientation of that drive shaft to the yoke. We can completely hammer off the yoke and also push off the rubber portion of that center bearing. That rubber was already damaged and was very easy to push off. Now as far as the bearing goes, I just took a pry bar and then hammered that bearing outwards. And that was pretty quick work. I also did hammer off this dust cover so that I could clean under it. I'm gonna throw some wheel bearing grease right on these bearing surfaces. Make it easier again for the future if we do have to do this again. Then we can install this center support bearing. It's important that we line up the two markings from earlier and make sure that these two surfaces on the yoke are completely parallel. And here I'm setting it on a 2x4 because if those two are not parallel, it would rock back and forth. Now we can hammer in that yoke with the socket and just keep working it in there so that it gets pushed in as far as we can. So a similar setup with the removal, I did clamp the middle of the shaft and this is just light just to keep it from getting picked up on uh, this two by four and I have the breaker bar on the opposite end. And now we can apply some blue Loctite on this. And we'll have to torque down this 24 millimeter nut to 100 foot pounds. Now don't forget to put the washer back in. Now we can put in nut. This is 100 foot pounds, so I'm just gonna drive it with my impact wrench for a bit. I have it at the lowest setting. So now let's check the torque. There we go. Now we got the new center bearing in. Very happy about that. Nice and smooth. And at this point, the only thing left really is to just clean up all these bearing surfaces, get rid of all the burrs, and then reinstall our new U-joints. And again, I go into full detail in one of my previous videos, which I'll link down below. To aid with the assembly of the U-joint, guys, I am using this wheel bearing grease and applying just a tiny bit onto those bearing surfaces. This allows those bearing caps to slide in much easier. Now it's definitely good if you have these Moog 270s with the grease fitting to orient it so that all the grease fittings are on the same side. There we go. We gotta make sure those needles don't fall over. Good enough. Now we could install our snap ring. And we could also install that Zerk fitting. Now let's do the other side. Put in our bearing cap. I'll actually lift it so that ensures that the needles don't fall in. So this one is, is a little stiff right here. So I'm going to take my plastic hammer and then just tap on those ears. Oh, it's much better. Now prior to installing this drive shaft, guys, it's definitely a good idea to just brush off as much of the dirt and debris that we have on the bottom side of this flange. And I'll do this for this side and the flange on the diff and the transfer case. So that at least it's as clean as possible. We can get those two surfaces to mate. And I'm also going to paint this with anti-seize to make sure it doesn't seize up in the future.
Now these bolts at the center support bearing will have to tighten down to 27 foot pounds. All right, guys, now let's tighten this bad boy up. Right now I have it in neutral. So I'm going, going to set, so I have access to the two diagonal ends. Then we'll pop the truck into gear. I've only put the nut on the two opposite ends just so that we can get the drive shaft suspended. So now I'm going to reinstall the washer on both sides. Apply some Loctite. And this we do have tightened down to 65 foot pounds. last two bolts to torque down and alternatively if you don't have a manual transmission you can definitely pull the e-brake just to keep this flange from spinning all right so that's pretty much it for today's repair video guys i have to say doing this job with a shop press is so much easier to do than using one of those screw presses that you rent from AutoZone. We've already used it twice in this repair series. And for those of you guys who like to do your own maintenance, this is definitely worth it to have in your shop. Now, the next video is going to be very exciting, guys, because I do take off the truck bed and do a little bit more fabrication work. So to do a quick recap of all the work that was done so far in the series, in part one, I do go over all the damage that the truck has sustained this past year from the trail running and from all the wheeling. In part two, we replaced the motor mounts. And in part three, we replaced the transmission mount and repair that damaged transmission cross member. In part four, we resealed my leaky rear differential. So that pretty much wraps up today's video, guys. And if you haven't yet, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. Until next time, peace out everybody.